So the subject matter today is wine video evergreen content curve. Stay tuned and I'll tell you all about this. So I'm very passionate about uh, content on YouTube, Vimeo, and other uh, platforms as well. I think it's really important to talk about. First of all, the audience here is really intended for three different audience types. So it's for wine video producers like myself. It's also for wine producers who produce wine videos, as well as an evergreen content producer. Now, these could be anybody who produces videos on food, spirits, it could be on uh, how-to videos, technology, and so forth. So when I go back to thinking of the reason I did this video is because I look at performance rates. And sometimes, you know, I've looked at the most current set of time, maybe the past three months, six months, and I'm not totally satisfied. And I think a lot of video producers are not. And I think there's a, a really great way of thinking about this. And I decided, well, I have about 2,000, you know, 500 plus videos. And I decided to plot the experience and the point of uh, how they perform over time. So I had a hunch that over time, wine videos produce better because people start to pull for your video. They start to look for this content. And, uh, you know, as you build your base, more people are going to look at your video content in a more timely basis. But over time, people discover what you're doing. My two top 10 videos are videos that I never would have expected to be my top 10. So my number one video is wine alcohol content. The second one is on wine glasses. And uh, so those are the two videos I would have probably voted off the island and said they're not going to perform very well. And for whatever reason, there was a great interest in the YouTube world to find these videos. And so over time, they continue to grow. So if I look at my current uh, data set, I can slice it and dice it by 28 days or three months or six months. So those tend to be in the top 10 viewed videos still. Now, I think over time that'll change. I may get a different set that's gonna produce differently. Now, I wanted to point this out because, uh, you know, I wanted to get a curve on this. I wanted to see what it looked like. So I'll post that curve right here. Now it shows videos being produced from the year 2009 when I first began to 2019 to today. Now when I look at this, I'm gonna see this uh, set of content in terms of uh, a pattern being established. That is over time, people start to discover your video content. The red line shows, you know, from the very, uh, you know, latest point right now to very few video views to the, you know, past where uh, my number one video hit is 9,500 hits for that one video. And, uh, you know, I thought, you know, this is interesting because I think this is what happens over time for evergreen content. Now, YouTube doesn't really look at evergreen content in the same way that it looks at, say, vloggers. So vloggers are people who have, you know, one to two million subscribers. People, you know, look at their videos in terms of, you know, 500,000 to 10 million hits per video. Being an active video content producer, but also being an active promoter of my own wine content as well. That's very vital and important to do. And I can tell who's doing it and who isn't doing it, especially in the wine world. Now, I'm gonna say right off the bat, it's really important for you to think about this because I've gone to market and said to uh, maybe a wine producer in Napa Valley recently, just happened to me, I reached out to a specific producer and I you know, was pitching for my channel here on YouTube and they said, no, not interested. So if you get something produced in a newspaper or magazine, we'll definitely give you a bottle. Well, that's great, but who's gonna produce something that this particular uh, producer has had many stories in print and it's gonna be really hard to pitch, if not impossible. I think that was a really big uh, you know, no, and that's what the person should have just said. Ultimately, it made me think differently about this producer and I would probably never ask again from this producer. And uh, that's because I think they don't really understand or believe in video, uh, wine videos on YouTube or Vimeo or other platforms. It's important to look at this because I think it's a great opportunity for having a language to speak to this, you know, putting this in your media kit. And as wine producers, uh, you might want to be thinking about how can I produce my videos over time where I'm actually giving a like and promoting my videos. Maybe somebody's producing a video for me that I didn't even know about. Let me do a search. 
Let me give a like. Let me give, uh, you know, put this on my website. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with that content to support that and keep this community active and going. Now, if you're an evergreen content producer who isn't producing wine videos, that's fine because you probably are in the same boat as well. Is your content, maybe it's on food or recipes or whatever it might be, it's just really producing at a very slow rate. And that is people are starting to discover you over time but it really takes a long time for them to discover your video content. And maybe they're just discovering that content upon demand. That's not a bad thing necessarily. I think it's one way to you know, calibrate your expectation. So write down what your expectation is, right? Have a video plan and a promotion plan. What does this look like today? How can I promote this five years from today? And just because you built it today does not mean that you've done all you need to do. And uh, you know, it doesn't take, you know, 10 hours per month to do that promotion. And I think it really can take as little time as you want, but you can just really, you know, reveal again to your, your consumer or a potential new viewer. And uh, that can happen all the time. Just because you published once five years ago, some content you had, doesn't mean that everybody who might be interested in that content knows about it, right? So that obviously your Twitter feed, your, your website, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. So wine amongst all uh, evergreen content is the most difficult category. I've talked about it, so I'm not gonna belabor it today, but it really has to do with it. It's a complex subject, right? It's a complex uh, beverage. It has vintage that probably no other product, consumer product has. It has a uh, variety, it has uh, vineyard specification or not. It has uh, regional designation. It has so many different characteristics. You know, blends, non-blends, uh, still sparkling, and again, you get that idea. And hence, you have so many SKUs on the marketplace that uh, I think many consumers have come to YouTube or Vimeo or other uh, platforms and search for video content specific to their needs. And guess what? They don't find it because it doesn't exist. So YouTube has very little interest in you know promoting the evergreen content category. So evergreen is always in a contest with, say, uh, non-evergreen content non-evergreen is vloggers. Vloggers are, you know, out of the gate producing a lot of video hits, have a lot of subscribers, you know, they're really popular maybe two days after their videos published and produced. That's not the same thing with uh, evergreen content. Now they do well in the very beginning, but over time they have actually a reverse of the uh, evergreen content curve in general. And that is because over time, people are not gonna have interest in Vlogger X or Vlogger Y. So I think over time, people are gonna lose interest in a particular vlogger over time. And even if that vlogger stops producing, say five years from today, very few people are gonna continue that path of understanding what they're doing because they've stopped doing what they're doing. Uh, vlogging's really general interest. It's a general category, very uh, non-specific. Sometimes it can be specific. But um, you know, YouTube it really looks at two things and gives those performance metrics on the back end, on the analytics side. So you can look at that and see the two hour video performance as well as two day. And so two day, uh, that is 48 hours. And uh, so when, they, when you look at that, you're just knowing that uh, YouTube is just helping these producers to think about that in terms of how they're doing. They do uh, build that into their logarithm. So um, your video content may not show up because it doesn't have that many clicks because it has something that's gonna age a little longer. It's uh, you know really looking for a very specific consumer, looking for very specific content, which they will find your content over time. And uh, that's something that I think that you know you get penalized for. And you cannot monetize. So there's some you know qualifications that YouTube has. That is, you have to be a member of good standing. You have to have over 1,500 subscribers. You have to have 10,000 uh, minutes viewed, I think it's every six months. And uh, so that continuous curve uh, vloggers can do that easily because they have long videos that are produced. If you're like myself and produce shorter videos, well, it's really harder to get that consumption over time. So I think it's really important to look and even plot. If you say have 200 videos or 100 videos, you can you know see how they're doing. The evergreen content curve that I'm suggesting may not perform exactly like your channel, but it may perform similarly. If it does not, then you can really think about how you can look at your past videos, maybe some need to be retired. So when you do retire, you might wanna put as an unlist versus uh, private, because if you put private, people are gonna look at that and say, well, why can't I look at that? If it's unlisted, it still doesn't take away the minutes or the clicks you've received. And uh, so that's one thing to look at. You can also look at you know, republishing or reposting your videos again. I've mentioned that before. 
And uh, thirdly, look at, you know, maybe there's things, elements you can bring in to create a higher production value of what you're doing. Uh, you probably have some great content, but maybe it needs to be delivered with more, some music or some intro or outro music, some logos, um, maybe some uh, visualizations, some pictures and so forth. So looking at that, I think will really help out in what you're doing today. So thank you for watching. Questions and comments down below. I'd appreciate that. And uh, give a like. That's where the like button is. Right up here is the subscribe button. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. On social, you'll find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and WordPress. And uh, so a conversation can happen there. So I hope this has helped you in thinking about, you know, my performance isn't doing well, but I'm going to do better in the future. And I'm really going to look at, at a strategy. I'm going to write it down. I'm also not going to penalize or feel bad about the videos that I'm producing today. I'm going to work hard on getting those videos produced for the long run. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. Sante.